I cannot believe how easy it is to host a free NNN server using a Docker container. In my last video, I walked you through hosting NNN server on a Linux machine. But today, we're taking it a step further. We'll deploy NNN server inside a Docker container for even greater flexibility and ease of use. Well, someone might ask, why do we have to host NNN on your local machine here? Well, it boils down to costs. With that, let's dive straight in. I'm going to start off by SSH into my Linux box here. That's the username at IP address 19168.44.214 and hit enter. As you can see, I've never logged into this machine. That's why they don't recognize the fingerprint. I'm going to say yes for now and enter the user password like that. Once that's done, you are logged in SSH into your Linux or Ubuntu box. I'm going to start off by logging in as a super user using the command sudo su and hit enter and enter the password. Once that's done, you are in a super user mode and all the commands you can use and install. I'm running Ubuntu 25.04. Let me show you. There you go. So Ubuntu 25.04. Now, the first thing I like to do before doing any installation is to update and upgrade all my packages using this command here and hit enter. All right, that is complete. The next thing I have to do is to install Docker Engine and Docker Compose. I'm going to install a couple of dependencies that the Docker Engine requires, which are CA Certificate, Curl, and this GNUPG, and hit enter. After that, I'm going to install or add the Docker official GPG key using these commands. By the way, do not try to copy or screenshot the command on the video here. I'll make all these commands available on the description of this video. Next, we're going to add the repository uh, into our Docker engine here, which adds the Docker's official package repository to my Ubuntu systems apt source list using this command. After that, I'm going to update my package list on my Ubuntu machine using this command. And now we are ready to install our Docker engine using this command here. Once the installation is complete, I'm going to clear my screen. You can do a quick check whether your Docker was installed or not using this Docker version. I'm using Docker version 28.3.1. And you can also run a simple uh, Docker's Hello World uh, command here like this. This essentially what it does is that it pulls the hello world image from a docker hub repository and basically creates a container. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is a command to show your image, your docker image. You can see that the hello world image was being pulled and after that if you do inner ls you can see that the container does not exist because the container had just exited after creating the container. That's why you can't see it. Minus a is to show everything. Now this actually resides in a memory, so it's a, a memory hog. So what I normally like to do is to basically do a container prune, which actually cleans up any existing uh, zombie or uh, hanging container, they call it. Now, if you do this, all the containers are being killed, cleaned up. Next, we'll install the uh, Docker Compose uh, using this command here. And after that, we're going to apply the executable permissions, which makes the Docker Compose binary file executable. And after that, we can verify the Docker Compose, whether it's been installed correctly or not, using this Docker Compose version. And it should show the version of your Docker Compose. Next, we'll add user to our Docker group to avoid using sudo all the time. What this command does is to configure your Linux user account to run Docker command without needing sudo each time you run the Docker command. With all that being said, now you're ready to pull init and Docker image and create a container for it. The first thing we'll do is to pull the NNN image from the Docker Hub repository using this command. Let's clear our screen first. Next, we'll pre-create some directory with the correct permission so that the NNN application could actually write persistence data in this particular folder. Once that's done, you are ready to create a container for the NNN using this command here. If you hit enter, you'll create a container here. So if you go Docker container ls, you can actually see that you have Docker container running on your machine here. Now you can quickly look into the Docker log file using this command here. If you hit enter, you can see that all the log for that particular uh, Docker container for the NNN is shown here. You can also run a curl command to see whether the web server for the NNN has been responding correctly. As you can see, it does respond with the HTML. 
But if you go back to the browser here and try to access this, using the IP address. If you're not too sure what your IP address is, it, it is easily available using the IP ADDR. And you can see my IP address for this Ubuntu box is this guy here. Let's copy in a clipboard, go back in here, and basically enter the IP address, colon, the port number, or the default port number for NAN would be 5678, and hit enter. What you'll get is you'll get this kind of error message saying that insecure URL. Now, there's a couple of configuration that's still missing that you have to do. Let's go back to our command prompt here and basically stop our container using this command. So now at this point, the Docker container is stopped. You don't see any of your init end container in your Linux box here. So the best approach would be to create a compose file. Nano is basically a text editor. You can use Vim or Vi. And after that, once the editor is open, you can simply paste this text into the uh, the text file here. I'll leave again all this command and all these files in the description of the video. Once that's done on uh, Nano, you're gonna press Control X to exit, save the file on the same file by pressing Enter. You can do a quick check using a cat command on the compose file, and you can see that now whatever you have entered on the text editor is available in here to create a container using uh, the compose simply use this docker compose up minus d minus d is used to indicate detached mode if you hit enter you will just exit out of it but if you look at your docker container ls you can see that they have created another container for you mapped to this port number here now if you go back in here and do the same thing here http slash slash IP address of a machine colon 5678, which is the port number and hit enter. You can see that now you're in the setup of the NHN. I'm gonna go ahead and register myself. Give some password here. And click on next. You can see that uh, the NHN server is actually working. Get started, skip. And you can see you can create your workflow with manual trigger and so on. But I do get questions from time to time saying that, okay, if the port number for N8N is 5678. How do we change it to a customized port number? Which is quite straightforward. We're going to go ahead and first stop this Docker container using this command here like this. And then if you look at the container, the container is not there anymore. Now, what we have to do here is go back to our nano command to our compose file here, to our text editor. And all we have to do here is to map the host port number to 8080 or whatever port number you like to the N8N port number of 5678. And after that, press Control X to save. Say yes and hit enter. And let's do a quick check and make sure that the changes we made actually landed up on that file here. You can see it's 8080. Now you're going to have to launch your Docker using the compose file like that. And let's have a quick look at your container. Make sure that the container is mapped correctly from 8080 to 5678. And let's go back in here. And if you try to launch your N8N web browser using the old port, which is 5678 and hit enter, you will not be able to get onto that web page using the old port number. So I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab here and say HTTP colon slash slash 192.168. But instead of 5678, I'm going to say 8080 like this. And now you can actually get access to your N8N server using the new port number. I'm going to go ahead and log in with my user credential. And now you're back into your workflow and all that stuff. Now let me show you some couple of debugging technique that you can use. Let's say for example, you have configured everything and, and you still can't get access to the N8N server. There's a couple of things that you can look at. The first thing you can do is to look at the log file of the Docker using the Docker Compose log minus F like this. It will show you whatever's happening in there. You can also use the Docker logs N8N, which is the container name for the N8N. And you will sort of uh, respond with the same kind of uh, output here. You can also use the container ID to log instead of container name, but you got to know the container ID through Docker container 
ls and this is the container id and you're gonna say docker logs container id and hit enter it will respawn with the same kind of uh, log file for you there my log file is not that big because i just started my docker container for the end it end but if your log file is very huge you can use this command to display the last 100 logs on the end it end last but not least we can do a bit of checking on the listening port for the end it end server on the container using this command here so basically what this does is that uh, it goes inside the end it end container and runs this netstat uh, command with this flag basically grabbing the port number 5678 and then uh, basically we know that 5678 is being used by a PID uh, 7 so what we can do is that we can run this same command but grab PID 7 PS is actually uh, they find out all the process that's running on that particular container and then grab only number 7 and you can see if you look at it number 7 itself is being use or the the id the pid for number seven the process id for number seven is actually n it n